What is going on, everybody? Bobby Fathom, man, Eric Sheet Tabor. We're going to be talking through the two NFL slates. This one, we're going to be talking through the Saturday slate. And then we're going to do another video talking about the Sunday slate. So we've got a small slate on Saturday. This is the, it's a fun time of year. You got sort of the NFL going all the time now. We're, we got Monday, Thursday, Saturday, and Sunday. So uh should be a lot of fun. Well, listen, I don't know about I don't know about you, Bobby. Yeah. I kind of want to win the million dollars. You you kind of want to win it? I think so. Okay, yes. I do too. That well, sometimes I, I, I'm like, you know what? Maybe I don't want to win this one, but I I think I I think this one I want I want to win one of these. Listen, I don't need to win both of them Saturday and Sunday, but maybe just one of them. So I don't right. know which one it's going to be, but what maybe maybe I got an idea. How about you win one, and maybe I'll win the other. I'll live mm -hmm. with that. Hey, I'll live with it too. That sounds very good to me. So um, we have to figure out which one it's going to be. So let's 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 start with the Saturday one. And and again, the three game slates are 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 interesting, right? Because it's not exactly a showdown slate, right? It's not exactly not even remotely close to a main slate. And there's interesting things to to consider. Like for example, I, I know on a main slate, you uh, you, you typically don't want to you know, use defenses against your receivers, although you will sometimes. And whereas showdown slate, obviously it doesn't matter. I think three games, I think I still would lead on the side that it doesn't matter. You know, I, I really wouldn't even think about it uh, once, whether I had a defense, whatever. But the other thing to think about is how many guys from one squad you could have um, on a team. Because you must, you don't want to have like five guys in the same team in, in a main slate, but on a showdown slate, it doesn't matter. I wonder what you can do on a three game slate. Now, again, it depends on the slate. We'll, we'll kind of get into it, but I think three games make, uh, you know, provide some challenges. The other thing to think about is, uh, is that each game is an Island game and you're going to want to, I know I think people are just, and I'm one of them. You're, they're not as good as they should be with the, with the late adjustments. Okay. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I know that and this is one of the reasons why like I'm doing the, the, the other project we're not allowed to talk about yet. Um, is, is that, is that whenever, and, and one of the reasons why I actually, when I did poker X factor, when I did this is the more you teach people how to do something, the better you are at doing something. So if I like, for example, said, you know what, it's this Saturday, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you exactly what you're supposed to do. And as far as like lane swaps and goes, and I would stay in front of the computer, I would do an amazing job of it. But because I'm not like pressured to like constantly walk people through it, I get lazy just like everybody else does. And I'm like, yeah, who cares? You know, whatever it is, I'm not doing well. I'm not, what am I going to do to really help me, help me save money? And maybe I'll do some things, but I myself do a much poorer job than I would, than I ask other people to do. Let's put it that way. So mm -hmm. well, maybe you learn that for me a little bit. Try, try to try, everybody try to do better with, with something like that, because it is a big advantage to be able to late swap and to change things and to give yourself more juice when you need it and less juice when you don't need it. Especially when you have like this example is Miami Buffalo game with all kinds of like ways to, to play that game, you know, all kinds of skill positions up for grabs there. Um, depending on how you do in these first game or two, um, you can make a lot of changes. And, and likewise, another question that you and I have to discuss is how much should we want to just push back to that game just for that exact reason? I guess, I guess that would be my overall slate preview. What, what do you, what do you think about this whole slate in general? Yeah, it's, it's the weather doesn't look great. And, and that's got to be why the total isn't a little bit higher for the Miami game. Okay. said true um, EFS NHL oh, projections have been goes. updated. They should be available. I don't know why it does that. I don't know how my, what to do with my setting when it does that. I don't know why it doesn't do that very often. So yeah. it's popped up anyway. Um, that that's probably what's keeping the ownership a little bit lower in that. I mean, sorry, the, uh, the, the, the total a little bit lower in that game than it could be. Um, it does look kind of nasty out there, but yeah, I agree that there's a lot you could do. Um, for for me, the the favorite game of this slate is probably the first one with Indy and, and Minnesota. I still don't respect Minnesota's defense, and I respect their offense. Uh, Indiana, I Indianapolis, uh, they're they're tougher a little bit, and you know we might have to talk. Let's let's talk through the games because I think that okay. it's it's going to be interesting to you know try to see how to get different on on a three gamer here. So, what are your thoughts of this first one? What, what who's, okay. who, who are you looking at? So the way I, I listen, I, I and for the those of you that are following the content. Don't know exactly how I'm going to handle this because I don't know if Evan set it up where I could put two main slates up on the board at the same time. So, so for for now, what's going to happen if you're a true DFS, DFS member is you're going to I guess I guess just you'll see the Saturday slate, and then when Saturday locks, then I'll just put the Sunday slate again. I don't know how else to do it. Maybe we'll reach out to Evan see if we can put both of them up there. Mm -hmm. But 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 I'm, I'm providing the same type of content. Like I'm, I'm putting the 
the projections up and I'm also putting the stacks up and I'm looking at my stacks ratings here. I do have like the three kind of favorites as being that's three favorites. So I have Minnesota, Buffalo and Indi Indianapolis in general have my three tops and Minnesota and Buffalo tied for first then Indianapolis second. The reason why I bring this up is you have two of them from the same game. So I think Indianapolis, Minnesota is like you were just kind of talking about is the main game that you want to target. Right. So these are the guys that I kind of want to look at and but first, before I do anything, again, I have to go with my my new my New Year's resolution, right? We talked about the other day, right? Be careful about getting too much exposure to these freaking drop back quarterbacks. So I just want to make sure that before I go recommend too much Kirk Cousins or too much Matt Ryan, right? Um, want to make sure that we're not supposed to consider, you know, guys a little more rushing upside first. You look at the rest of the slate here. There's Tua, not really. Sean Watson, I don't really think he's in play as a rushing quarterback right now. And then there's Tyler Hundley, who it's just a different type of, you know what I mean? It's not like he's, he's like Jalen Hurts or anything like that, you know? So I'm not worried too much, but the Josh Allen thing, like, bothers me. You know, like, uh, uh, we'll, we'll talk about him in a minute. Yeah. So on Minnesota, Cousins with to Jefferson and Hawkinson, those are, I guess, the way I would start. Um, uh, running backs, I guess, Cook. But we'll talk about whether he's a good player for the rest of the slate in a second. Indianapolis, I'm having – you know, Ryan to Pittman and Campbell, but I am, I don't know. I'm still, I'm still more of a believer in the Alec Pierce. So I will, I will, if, if people are going to play more, more Campbell, I will definitely play some more Alec Pierce. Um, and I guess the running backs and obviously Jonathan Taylor. Um, so what, what do you think of the running backs? What do you think of this game? How, how would you attack this game considering also that it is an early game, you know, uh, where are you at in this game? I, I like everything from this game. Um, yeah. I, I like both running backs. I am open to both quarterbacks on this slate. Uh, I actually think Matt, I have Matt Ryan actually a little bit higher rated, um, partially because he's going to be a little lower honed. Okay. And um, Pittman is way too cheap. That's the obvious play of the slate to me. Um, and then Pierce and Campbell, I think are going to have similar ownership and okay. they're, bo they're both fine. KJ Osborne on the other side, I like a lot at 3,700. Um and then I, I probably am gonna gonna try to fade Jefferson. Uh, doesn't feel great, but I'll, I'll definitely have him in some lineups. But I think one of Jefferson, Thielen, and Osborne will be in basically all of my lineups. And I think Osborne might be the one who I end up using and uses as a sort of a cheap game stack. Mm -hmm. um, and then maybe maybe hit some of the big targets in the in the Buffalo uh, Miami game a little later. Uh, I also really <laughs> like. Um, uh Hawkinson but I think he's going to be really popular and I'm you know Matt Ryan historically has thrown the ball to tight ends quite a bit so it's kind of you know we I was kind of seeing if there's anything we could do creative and try and use one of one of these you know whether it whether it's Woods or I don't know if it, it'll be Moali Cox or Granson the problem is there's too many guys and I don't know it doesn't doesn't feel great but I'm not not writing off the possibility of potentially using a uh, tight end there. I, I just think this game stays fairly close. I mean, it's pretty crazy. Minnesota, this game was only three and a half when it opened. It's four and a half now, but you know, 10 and three, like, it's just really weird that, that Vegas hates Minnesota and kind of for good reason. Like they're, they're, they're a little bit fraudulent. They're, they're playing a little bit above their heads. They don't have a great defense and they don't have a great quarterback to be honest with you, but they, uh, they do have in incredible talent at receiver and tight end and at running back. So um, I, I am into this one. I think that if you're, and then I think in large fields, uh, you might get Ashton Dolan or, uh, a little bit of Alexander Madison. That, that would be my just very, very large field tournament plays. Well, you want to comment, uh, on what I asked earlier about the, like, especially with the context of this slate, um, with respect to how many guys you might want to, might be able to play. Like, would you, would you consider if you can get it in like a lineup with, uh, I don't know, just for the hell of it. If you want to play Cousins, so you want to play Fade Jefferson. So let's say you want to play Thielen. So if you Fade Jefferson, you play Thielen, Osborne, and Dalvin Cook. Could you do something like that? You could, but I don't think you need to. Okay. Not the okay. Okay. So I, I think it's, I think I just have it as one of the receivers as because okay. I think Hawkinson takes up enough too. Like you know what I mean. He's, okay. Hawkinson is probably like that's actually kind of what I meant. So Hawkinson as well. Just like how many of these receivers can you put in one lineup? Right. Um, I guess that's well, my question. Depends on who you're, what quarterback you're using. Um, well, let's I say think, we're playing Cousins. What I'm saying, like, like, like how many? Well, if, you're, these... if you're playing Cousins, I think you probably do want to play Jefferson. Um, I, I have Cousins lower, a little bit lower on my board. I'll use a little bit of them, but I, I mostly am I'm more on on the side of trying to fade him at, at really chalky ownership. So 
you can't really get different with that much in this game, but it should be your staple. And the main pieces to me are Taylor cook Pittman. Um, and then you pick one of the receivers from, from Minnesota. That's yeah. That. You can play, you can play. I mean, this is, and they do this with these slates, I think on purpose. I mean, you really can play almost whoever you want the slate, right? I mean, yeah. Taylor's only 7,200 cooks only 6,900. I mean, I haven't looked at the Buffalo. All the running backs are cheap. That's for sure. Um, yep. Okay. Uh, I will also say that uh, that defense from this game, uh, Vikings are the most expensive defense on the slate. They're probably going to be the lowest owned, I think, as a result, because um, all these defenses are really cheap. Um, yeah. uh, I, I actually don't think any particular defense is better than the other. I'll just end up probably, I'll end up probably with exactly the same amount of all of them. If you want another treat. So um, I'll play some indie defense. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. That's what I'm saying. I'll play yeah, like yeah. the same amount of all of them. Yeah, absolutely. Listen, Indianapolis defense is not bad, and Kirk Cousins is more than willing to 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 uh, to prove that <laughs> to pursue right. defenses. You know, right? Uh, all right, you want to move on to uh, the, the yeah. The- so this is an interesting one. They're trying to force Dobbins back in, and I know he had a big couple of big plays, and then he had a good game last week, and I think he's going to be pretty popular as a result, and he's really cheap. Um, Dob- this they're going to go more away from the split running back if they feel like Dobbins is, is good to go, basically. They're also going to probably not go away from it in this game because they're probably going to give all these guys a chance. <laughs> um, so Dobbins projects really well. I think that that, that Gus, Edward, Gus Edwards is an interesting tournament play because it could easily go to him. Dobbins had one play last week where he broke free and should have been for like a big touchdown and got caught by like a linebacker, which just shows that his burst isn't quite there. Um just throwing that out there because I think it's important to to note. Um, and I think it, it's going to be hard to know what to do with this game when we don't know who the quarterback is. If Huntley is the quarterback, I will take some shots with Huntley. I'm not going to play any Brown. Um, but I do think I would take some shots with Huntley. And it's really hard to like the receivers, though, too much. Um, even if you're playing Huntley, I think that Demarcus Robinson is the obvious one or Mark Andrews. And I think they're both fine with whoever with with either of the quarterbacks. So I have it at Dobbins or Dobbins or Edwards. Um, and then I like the, uh, the, I do like a little bit of the uh, Mark Andrews just because the price um, Edwards and Andrews, there we go. Um, but it's, 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 this is a tough game to, to, to really want to stack up. And Deshaun Watson has looked com- like just God awful. Um, I do like Donovan Peoples Jones a little bit here. Um, secondary secondary receivers have had have lit up uh, Baltimore a lot this season, even though they've been a little bit better lately. And I have these running backs a little bit below the running backs. I have the Chubb and 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 Hunt and everything a little below the running backs in the first game. But I do think that that they're both in play. Um, I'm just not quite as high on this game. My favorite plays in it are, I guess, overall are going to be Peoples Jones. Um, I think David Bell certainly deserves some consideration and. I think that, uh, yeah, on the other side, it's the Marcus Robinson. It's, it's kind of the game you're using for 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 the most value, right? Like, but I guess do you even need all of it? And it's going to make it. God, that Jefferson play is going to be a lot more popular even than I than I think it's projecting to be. But uh, I like the idea of using some Andrews with uh, with some Peoples Jones on the other side. All right, I got I got some for you. Um, first of all, let's let's talk about Cleveland. Um, I mean, you could make the case that Deshaun Watson is just rusty and coming back and whatever it is, but and boy, oh boy, on a short slate, I, I might, I might, I might get suckered into a little bit of that. Um, it's tough to it's tough to play football if you're not playing for two years. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, his first game was pretty bad against Houston. Just first first game back, and then at Cincinnati, it's not you know, the easiest spot. Not that Baltimore is whatever, but I. If he's going to be low owned somehow, I I I, I would take a shot actually at Deshaun Watson. Um, I like Cooper uh, at sixty one hundred. Presuming obviously, presuming he plays, but he's hasn't been in what you call it. He hasn't been uh, uh, in practice. So I it says the Browns are counting him to suit up Saturday. I don't know. We'll see. Um, Najoku has been uh, very, uh, very active. Let's see if he was, he's got questionable as well. He's a limited participant. I'm presuming he plays, but he's been nine targets, seven targets, seven targets. And, you know, he's got, he's got upside. So I, I actually, more than I'm thinking about this Cleveland side, I think, I think I might be interested in this. So 
Baltimore, you kind of like hit on the 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 uh, what you call it, the J.K. Dobbins thing. The interesting thing about it is that he's his price is just right in with all, a lot of other 52, 5,300 guys that you could yeah. pivot if you want uh, between Mostert and the Singletary and even Jeff Wilson or Gus. Like you said, Gus Edwards in the same game, whatever it is. Mm-hmm. So you don't have to play J.K. Dobbins. Um, but but I, I I I've got something for you. So you have um. You have Duvernay, who was actually uh, he was coming a part of the offense there. In his last game, he really didn't do much. I see that what's his name, um, uh, Robinson is actually he was a non-participant as well. He had he had most of the the targets. I think he's been the primary receivers, and he's definitely in play if he plays. Can I interest you in three game slate in Deshaun Jackson at thirty three hundred? Not really. Um, oh, come on. You got, you got to let me have one one long pass down the middle for 70 yards. Not enough. A billion dollars. You not can't enough. give it to me? You've, you've got legitimate guys in, in in the same price range that are just like Pierce and, and Osborne who are like legitimate plays. Deshaun right. Jackson will play probably 10% of the snaps. Okay. Um, All right. Fine. But, but like, I, I mean, I obviously I considered it right away. And oh, did you? If I'm I'm waiting till Lamar comes back and 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 to play Deshaun Jackson because I do think he'll have some big plays. I I don't necessarily trust either of these guys throwing him the ball, and it's not like it's a it's a great matchup either. Um, well, the I, annoying thing is that Robin if Robinson is out for some reason, then you probably he'll probably end up being owned. <laughs> he'll be very chalky. Yeah, exactly. Um, and I would just probably okay. switch over to all Duvernay. right. Well, look, Andrews is probably the primary target between Andrews and Robinson. Yeah. Um. Uh, Isaiah likely. I think he's he out of the rotation now that now that uh, Andrew's back. Yeah, I guess so. Um, I mean, he's a, he's a long shot play. I think I think that you could consider. Yeah. So I, I like I, I I'm actually curiously more interested in this game than I thought I would be. Uh, these Cleveland games are always weird like that. Like it remind me of the Cleveland Pittsburgh games. You don't know whether they're going to be fourteen to ten or forty five to forty. And um, boy, it's only a three game slate. If I if I get lucky. And Cousins stinks, and Ryan stinks, and the Buffalo game, the weather just goes freaking ballistic on me. And I have, like, if I, if I get very lucky with the – listen, I know what I'm going to do on the Cleveland side. You know, I'll play, I'll play, I would play Cooper, I would play Njoku, and I would play Jonathan Peoples-Jones. And how about that? You play Deshaun Watson with those guys, run it back with Deshaun Jackson, let's go, all right? Um, now, again, that's a surefire way to come in 437,000th. <laughs> okay, but you know, listen. The people that put in those showdown lineups uh, a couple of days ago, the cash for five hundred thousand, oh, they were probably like a ninety-nine percent favorite to come in four hundred thousand. But that one percent, it's always, it's always out yeah, there. You get everybody injured; it, it's all possible. Ex- uh, exactly. So uh, I, I, I hear you. Yeah, but it's, it's you know, it's a little hard until we get the report. Like I, I do think that that if if Robinson's out, maybe that opens up Duvernay or Jackson a little bit. But um, but I, I, I as of right now, this is definitely the least interesting game on the slate for me. And I don't think that's anything surprising based on the total, but I do think you want the, the, the main pieces I think are people's Jones, Andrews, and then you've got the value running back. If you want to go for, for, for uh, Dobbins. And I think you could take a shot easily on Kareem hunt. I will mention that I played Nick Chubb at like 1% ownership in this matchup, like two years ago. And he ran for like 200 and something yards and three touchdowns. Ooh, I like that. And I, and I, I ended up finishing, I think second in the single entry where it was hundred K oh. per and one fifty K. Oh. So, it was a pretty nice one. So it's still ringing in a little bit of the back of my mind. Maybe I want to play some Chubb, but as of right now, I have him below Taylor and cook um, personally. Okay. Um, last game. Tyreek Hill at nine K against Buffalo at Buffalo is tough. Right? It's, it's, it's tough to play, especially. I mean, the Buffalo is going to be playing a lot of that zone stuff. Um doesn't seem like something I want to do, but I don't know. Um, the the in Miami's last game, the the kind of showdown play that people played and, and sort of got there was was Cedric Wilson. He got two two targets. He had two receptions for four fantasy points. That was like I think enough to win the slate actually. <laughs> um, but I would play to it in a bounce back spot. I mean, he got a, he got a lot of. Got a lot of bad heat for that last game. Uh, man, listen, deservedly so, right? But uh, if 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 Hill is is healthy enough to play, you still have a, a really good connection there between uh, Tua Hill and Waddle. 
Um, and I know Buffalo's defense is tough, but hey, it's only three games. You know, what do you want? What do you want me to do? Um, and then uh, other Miami guys, I I really haven't been following what's going on with with uh, Mostert and um, Wilson. You would have thought that Mostert would be the guy, more of the guy, but that was a weird game against the Chargers. I don't know what's going on over there. What did Jeff Wilson do in that game? He had four for 26. So it seems like somewhat of a split backfield, I guess, but you'd think Mostert would be the top guy. I guess I see why these Miami guys are going to be kind of low on. It's kind of tough to play. Um, in any case, I'm probably going to yeah, have to have some. I'm going to have to have some Hill. I'm going to have to have some some two of stats. I'm just going to have to. And then on the Buffalo side, um, like I said, Josh Allen is – the, the real the guy that's got the most fantasy points. I mean, really, um, he can throw a touchdown passes. He can run, um, and I could play. You could play him by himself, like, obviously. Um, and then there's Diggs and Gabe Davis. I mean, there's certainly nothing wrong with any of this. Jo- Dawson Dawson Knox at thirty nine hundred, I think, is probably really cheap. Um, so, listen, Josh Allen with with. Two pass catchers and he'll run back. You can get away with that too on this slate. Depends on what you want to do. Um, and again, this is a late game. So like if you play digs and then it turns out that you're not doing well and you want to pivot to Davis and do something different, maybe you could certainly do that. What, what's, what's your take on this game? What's your take on the weather impact? Which, what do you want to do here? I mean, I think it seems I, I'm very confused by the, the the whole point spread and everything. I'm surprised even with the weather, like I'm surprised the total is as low as it is. It's really weird to see yeah, to less than a 20 total. Yeah. I don't know why Buffalo is a seven and a half point favorite. Um, you think it should be more or less? Oh, much less. I don't see. Oh, okay. what do I know? Why, why, are, why are we why are we so enthralled with this? I've been saying this all year long. This Buffalo team is semi is semi fraudulent, to be honest with you. They could still win the Super Bowl. They have not played good football. And they, 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 you know, a team that can't run the ball, it's, it's, it's always tricky to have a, 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 you know, all the game scripts look for like a running game because the, because the weather in Buffalo this time of year, and then they can't run the ball. I don't really understand, you know, why they, why they wouldn't maybe go back to a guy who I like as a long shot play. And that's James Cook. Um, one week after everybody, people started to get into him again. And then, you know, he, he's showing up with some ownership early on, but I, it feels like a, a James Cook type of game environment um, that he could he could potentially get the the, the running opportunities again. Um, they're using Singletary more, you know, Singletary is more of a pass catching back, although he, he'll run the ball too. Like, I just think it's, I thought it would be a more of a long shot play. Then I look at the projections and he's actually getting some ownership, but Mostert or Wilson are tough to decide between. The part that's weird to me is that we were so desperate to cram in some expensive receivers that Wilson and Mostert were like, 30% owned each on like main slates when we had the same situation going on. So I'm a little, con- you know, confused by all that. I guess the, my takeaway from, from this one, my favorite plays would be Waddle. I do like Sherfield as a long, large field play. I think he's a, like to talk about Deshaun Jackson versus Sherfield. I would rather play Sherfield by a lot. Um, and then Gabe Davis is my favorite receiver for Buffalo followed by Diggs, then McKenzie. I think McK- they're all in play though. Uh, super large field would be Shakir. And I prefer Dawson Knox over Gasecki between the two tight ends. Um, and if I had to stack one side of it, I would stack Buffalo. But I'm open to the idea of a low-owned to a stack because I just don't think people are going to be able to go there. And I think that while Tyreek Hill's showing up with a lot of ownership early in the day, I still think m- more of the ownership is going to go to Justin Jefferson than to than Tyreek by at least double. So I kind of like that as a as a to, you you could probably try to find a way to cram in a Tua with with Waddle and Hill if you wanted to go that to be so bold on this slate, run it back with Gabe Davis and potentially cook or Knox um, and then use the value from the other games. But that is something I will, I will definitely make as, as one of my lineup, one of my main string of lineups, I should say. I would say something else again. I, I get, he is listed as questionable Tyree kill. And we talked about this. I talked about this after the Monday game and he was, he was legit hurt in that game. Yeah, um, he'll play. Yeah. I, I guess I'll play, but I'm not 100 percent sure he's going to play. Um, maybe the point spread is telling us something. Yeah, maybe. I mean, if you're Tyreek Hill. You really want to go out in the freaking cold and play hurt? I mean, I don't. Uh, they need well, here, here's a guy that, that that you mentioned. I was going to ask you more about him. So what I did was I just ran 150 lineups in in Sabreson to see what it would come up with, and a couple of guys that showed up uh, more like a decent amount that we didn't talk about. Um, not surprisingly, are these some of these cheapo tight ends? So. I'm, I would be getting a decent amount of Jelani Woods um, from Indianapolis, who we didn't talk about, probably because he's 0% owned in my, in my run, actually. Um, right. 
Uh, and then the Kylan Granson also because he's zero percent owned. So aside from that, um, I, I get I'd be getting it looks like mostly Cousins and Minnesota offense, which we thought you know Minnesota and Indianapolis would be the top uh, would be the top guys. Yeah, I do want to point out that people may not realize, but Indiana, Indianapolis, I, I believe. Let me just double check my my thing before I say something. I I don't you mean their think. defense. They, they, yeah, their their defense is probably like better than they get credit for, but it yeah. doesn't seem to matter that much with Minnesota. They can sort of score on anybody because they're just yeah. they just have so many weapons. I mean, okay. um, I'm trying to grab this thing up real quick. Let me just double check a couple of my my my. my and and, and when, before you forget, tell me more about this David Bell guy because you brought him up. I had never heard of him. And I saw him in a, a lineup or two when I first ran this. So David Bell is is you know you have a cheap option. He's the the the, the they're certainly their third their third receiver. Yeah. Um, and you have you know a slightly banged up uh, Amari Cooper, which probably benefits him. David Bell had you know he had he caught three passes last week, nothing special, but he's consistently been getting regular work and just hasn't had that that big game. It's it's a small slate. It's a you know it's a it's a it's a cheap play that I, I prefer Sherfield to David Bell. But I do I don't mind the idea of taking a, a shot with David Bell because he's going to get consistent work and uh, could just squeak his way in you know for a touchdown and all of a sudden he pays off his salary. Um, it, it, it's not an exciting play. He's not a burner, but he's you know he's okay enough. I, I do think that it's worth noting that you know the, the the number of targets that Peoples Jones got last week and I'm I'm just I'm very very high on that play. He's probably my my biggest priority. Um, I think he and Gabe Davis at, at receiver at 51 and 5K could easily be right there with the right just below the Jefferson and and Tyreek games uh this week. Yeah, and look at some of these other guys that are coming up and it's so funny. One one thing Saberson doesn't do the greatest job doing is I'm just using their projections right now and their simulations yeah. is 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 adjusting for the fact that that guys are in different roles than they're being like for example there's um there was a lineup I just saw with a guy who was only getting oh like uh, Kenyon Drake for example yeah you know, like yeah I mean Kenyon Drake he was he would if it was like two weeks ago he would have been probably show up in some lineups because you know Baltimore hadn't really shown their hand you know it seems as though it's going to be something some combination of Edwards and um well, we and haven't Dobbins. had we haven't had Dobbins in all year well, that's what I'm saying it seems yeah. like at this point it's going to be some combination of Dobbins and Edwards so I don't think you probably would want to play any of of Drake, but when you run like a Saberson simulation, it's going to come up with some games that may have worked that right. I think must have been like predicated on those guys being out somehow. I don't know. Yeah. Um, yeah. Sherfield, Jelani Woods. Let's look at some names that we need to talk about. Yeah. So again, like anything else, it's going to be, it's going to be uh, getting some help. They really want to play some Alexander Madison here. That's uh, a, yeah, I actually don't mind that, by the way. Yeah. This is three game slate stuff. You know what I mean? Uh, yep. Harrison Bryant, you know, but again, Harrison Bryant would be a play I would make if I didn't think that, you know, that if, 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 uh, no, Joko hasn't been looking so good, you know, like Joko looks good. So they look for him more. I think, I don't know if Harrison Bryant's going to get in there anymore, you know? So. Yep. Um, yeah. I hear you. <laughs> I, I agree with you that, that I, I like, the, I like the, I, I, you know, you're but I think that, you know, in, in the one fifties, you do want to get sort of all, all that weird exposure. You, you want some Isaiah likely all it takes is one touchdown catch. You know what I mean? He could yeah. be the highest scoring tight end. Doesn't, it doesn't, it's not like tight ends need to score. Right. Um, uh, even though obviously I, I really do like Andrews here, um, regardless of what, if, if Huntley's quarterback, I like him even better. I actually think if Huntley's quarterback, I will play some Huntley with Andrews and then use the rest of it, like stack the other games without the quarterbacks, like the, uh, you know, use, use one of the Miami receivers, use Jonathan Taylor and Dalvin cook and then Gabe Davis or something like that. And then boom, there's your lineup. If, if Huntley plays, I, I would take a shot against this spread these Browns. Naheem oh, Hines? No. Nope. Uh, no. No. You, you th we thought after they got him that he would be more a, f a factor, but he's, he really hasn't been. It's been Cook or, or, or Singletary. He has a total of negative five rushing yards. <laughs> it's three, not great, is it? Three, negative three, then three, negative eight. <laughs> oh, no, he had 20 a couple of games before. Damn it. Okay. 
Well, it should, it should be a fun one. Um, I, I will try to, I, I will definitely post my, my, my early plays and I don't know if I'm going to be able to make it Saturday morning, but I definitely will definitely be around Sunday morning for the Sunday slate. And we're going to make another video for the Sunday slate, but it is a, uh, it is, uh, it is always tricky to figure these out a few days in advance. And there's probably, a, you know, that we have a few injury question marks. Like if, if Cooper's out, that changes things a lot. Huntley, if he's in and that changes things a little bit for me, cause I like him better than, than Edwards. Um, I'm sorry, better than Brown. Anyway, a uh, lot to look out for, but uh, Sheets, anything else before we get out of here? No, sounds good. All right. Good luck, everybody. And we'll be back with a, uh, a Sunday video.